August Franz Anton Hans Fritz Shaw was born on April 21, 1900 in Bochum, Germany to a Prussian postal clerk. He volunteered in the German army in 1917 as a private soldier and served in Flanders. After the war, he studied at the universities of Griffesveld and Berlin, but did not graduate. He became a journalist in 1923 for the Hugenberg Press, which promoted nationalistic opinions not that different from the Nazis. In September 1932, he began his broadcasting career as head of the Drahtlosedienst. This was the wireless news service, a government agency. He then started his first broadcast, a daily program called Hans Fritz Shaw Speaks. In May 1933, he joined the Nazi Party and on May 1, 1933, the wireless news service was incorporated into Joseph Goebbels' propaganda ministry. Fritz Shaw was then appointed head of the press division in 1938. In November 1942, he became head of the radio division. During the war years, Hans Fritz Shaw was Germany's most prominent radio commentator. After Hitler's suicide in 1945, Goebbels assumed Hitler's role as Chancellor. He dictated a letter to Soviet General Vasily Chuikov, requesting a temporary ceasefire, this was rejected. Goebbels decided that further efforts were futile. He then launched into a rant at the generals, reminding them Hitler forbade them to surrender. Fritz Schull left to try and take matters into his own hands. He went to his nearby office and wrote a surrender letter addressed to the Soviet Marshal George Zukov. An angry and drunk General Wilhelm Bergdorf followed Fritz Shaw to his office. There he asked him if he intended to surrender Berlin, to which Fritz Shaw replied that he was going to do exactly that. Bergdorf shouted that Hitler had forbidden surrender and as a civilian he had no authority to do so. Bergdorf then pulled his pistol to shoot Fritz Shaw but a technician knocked the gun and the bullet missed. Several men then escorted Bergdorf out of the office and he returned to the bunker. Fritz Shaw then left his office and went over to the Soviet lines and offered to surrender the city. Fritz Shaw was taken prisoner by Red Army soldiers. At first he was held prisoner in a basement, then sent to Moscow for interrogation at the Lubyanka prison where, according to his story, Three gold teeth were yanked from his mouth upon arrival. He was held in a standing coffin, a tiny cell where it was impossible to sleep, and placed on a bread and hot water diet. He eventually signed a confession. Fritz Shaw was sent to Nuremberg, and tried before the International Military Tribunal. He was charged with conspiracy to commit crimes against peace, war crimes and crimes against humanity. In his positions in Germany's propaganda apparatus, he played a role to further the conspiracy to launch the war of aggression. According to journalist William L. Shira, it was unclear to the attendees why he was charged. Shira remarked that no one in the courtroom, including Fritz Shaw, seemed to know why he was there, he was too small a fry, unless it were as a ghost for Goebbels. According to the IMT prosecution, he incited and encouraged the commission of war crimes by deliberately falsifying news to arouse in the German people, those passions which led them to the commission of atrocities. Fritz Shaw was acquitted because the court was not prepared to hold that, his broadcasts, were intended to incite the German people to commit atrocities on conquered peoples. He was one of only three defendants to be acquitted at Nuremberg, along with Heilmer Schacht and Franz von Papen. Nuremberg prosecutor Alexander Hardy later said that evidence not available to the prosecution at the time proved Fritz Shaw not only knew of the extermination of European Jews but also, played an important part in bringing Nazi crimes about, and would have resulted in his conviction. Fritz Shaw was later classified as Group 1, a major offender, in 1947 by a denazification court which gave him the maximum penalty of eight years imprisonment. He was pardoned in September 1950 and married his second wife, Hildegard Springer, in 1950. He died of cancer on September 27, 1953, in Cologne, followed by his wife the same year.